Hey guys, welcome to another Jaffo Paints video. As you can see, we have the Iron Kings Iron Kingdoms Adventure Board Games, The Widower's Wood. We are gonna paint this guy. He is Olo the Croak Hunter. I'll give you a chance to take a look at him real quick. I've already got him primed in white. Let me see if I can block some of that stupid light off of him because he is reflecting real much. He's a uh, I guess a, a, I don't know, a, a dude. He's a dude. Uh, he's a he's a frogman. He is a, uh, uh, a, he's got some grenades on his hands and back. Those are gourds. We've got, I don't know. We'll figure it all out as we go. How about that? Um, so I kind of got it, well, the palette that we're planning on working with today. The majority of the colors is going to be right here. We're going to use some Castellan Green as a base. We'll use some Ethonian Camo Shade, which is a green uh, ink, to shade him all up. We'll use some Lauren Forest and some Strachan Green as some highlights. For his hands, we're going to go with an interesting kind of blood orange red. Using a Mephiston Red base, Troll Slayer Orange. Oops, my thumb's in the way. Troll Slayer Orange, and then Fle Fire Dragon Bright as another highlight. Uh, for the ropes, we'll use some Mornfang Brown and Baneblade Brown. Uh, we might throw in ever, our ever-popular Null Oil. And for the uh, his knife, we'll use a combination of Eschen Gray and Dawnstone Gray. And, I don't know, we'll figure something out when we get to his base. Either black or gray or even... Uh, this baby poop brown, Baylor brown here. Because um, if you wanted to see, prior to priming them, all of the all of the heroes for this board game are supposed to be in this kind of tannish color. So we just want to make sure that people know that those are the heroes, although I don't think you'll forget. However, let's get started here. So the first color that we're going to do, which is going to be the majority of our color, and now I'm going to paint this as as the uh, or as a representation of the model on the uh, or the the picture, but you could choose anything to change your frogman into. Uh, I would just look up any kind of tree frogs, and uh, go from there. And this one, in fact, I'm using the wrong brush right now. I am going to switch over and use one of my basing brushes. Use my medium basing brush. And we're just going to literally cover every part of this model in green. And that's all we're going to do. It's a real nice, simple start. We'll cover it all in green. I will be right back and show you what it looks like. There we go. We now have our Castell in green. And as you can see, he's much easier to see now that he's not in that shiny white. And white was all I had to prime with last night in the frozen tundra of Wisconsin. Uh, if anybody's paying attention to the way the crappy weather is, it sucks balls out here. That is a scientific weather term, by the way. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our Ethonian Camo Shade. And this time we're going to be a little bit more, I don't know, selective with it versus the green paint. And you want to paint wherever you see skin. Um, but literally it's just going to be another kind of slop it all on process here. And we're just going to paint the entire... Uh, body that that is showing. Um, you want to miss all of the the ropes that are on him on his back. He's got some turtle shells on his arms. Um, like this whole arm, you can see is just very confused. There is so much crap going on on there. So we're just going to go through, and we just want to paint up all the legs. And the rest of this we'll end up getting with some other colors once we get there. So once we get all of that, give that a good 10 to 20 minutes to dry. And you'll be ready to go. So I'm going to finish this all up and I will be right back when it's all dry. Alright, now after applying our shade, as you can see, he's kind of darkened up quite a bit. Um, we're going to switch over and we're going to work on his hands. So we're going to make his hands and feet. We're going to paint them Mephiston Red. So I already got some on my palette here ready to work with. And with the 
with both of them, you just want to kind of, I don't know, see where they go, I guess. Take a look at your art. Take a look at some pictures online. I would say go up about there. If you look at the art image here, it looks like it goes up about halfway with his with his feet it looks like it's pretty much all of the fingers here it looks like it goes all the way up to like the first knuckle or the the last knuckle um and yes that just shows you how weird a frog guy is he actually has knuckles um yeah and here's kind of the same thing so that's what we're going to aim for as i'm knocking off paint off camera um so we're going to paint all the way up into his knuckles and all of the hand on both sides here so we'll paint up to that knuckle there and then the same here although on the feet it'll be easier because we can paint up at least on this foot we can paint to the rope and this one I would just say paint pretty much the entire foot area so I'm gonna clean that all up and I'll be right back and show you what it looks like okay there we go we now have the Mephiston red on and I've gone through and we painted up all of his hands his fingers his feet his toes uh, when it comes to his hands here I just decided to kind of go where it seems like he has a wrist um, here it was real easy because he's got a whole bunch of I don't know garbage on his arm on this side uh, it looks like it's actually and actually we're gonna add that to our thing we'll get some leather so, of course, we're adding XV88, and I did forget uh, Averlin Sunset we're going to use for his gourds, because he's got cool little gourd bombs. That's his, one of his abilities. Um, I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Mornfang Brown. Actually, you know what? We'll do, yeah, we'll do Mornfang Brown as I go and prep paint on my palette. Um... So for the Mornfang Brown, what we're going to do is we are going to do all of the ropes. Instead of just pointing, let's actually start painting. We're going to do all of the ropes. We're also going to do the turtle shell. Um, and that is pretty much it. Uh, this weapon here, it looks like a weapon. I think it's a weapon. We're going to treat it like a weapon. So we're going to paint that in like a stone. But he is lots and lots of ropes all the way around his body. Um, oh, and I just realized I'm going to need some Ushap de Bone for the uh, in there. Uh, so yeah, I'll figure it all out and I'll show you what it's, it looks like when we're done. Okay, there we go. We now have most of the uh, Mornfang Brown added. <laughs> We're then going to switch into our XV88, which is what we use for leather always. Um, for the leather, I have decided I'm going to paint the, uh, uh, the his crotch flap, I guess is probably what it is. I don't know. Loincloth, that's the word I'm looking for. Sorry for the inappropriate words. Eh, what am I saying? I am inappropriate. But we will uh, do his butt flap. Well, actually, it's just his front flap. His butt is covered by... Uh, gourds um so make sure you paint the front and the back of that um and then he's got all around him he's got little bags at least what i think are little bags and so we're going to paint those up and every time you hear me rinsing my brush i'm just trying to get a better uh, point on my brush tip so it's easier to control the paint but you just want to go around you're going to get all of this all of this so i'm gonna paint that all up and i'll be right back there we go we now have some leather added to him um and he's starting to come together he's really starting to flesh out as a interesting piece um uh, i did see some metal so i will be using some lead belcher later um one of the things uh, i've realized is he's actually got a fish hook hanging out of his mouth and a little bit of fishing line um, as you hear crashing in the background don't worry about that uh, we are going to go with most of his weaponry is that stone colored instead of uh, metal and that just seems kind of befitting for him so 
I think the next color, I don't even know what the next color is. I think the next color is ink. Yep. So I think we're going to switch over to our Nuln Oil. And all of the brown stuff, anything that is in Mornfang and in XV88, I'm going to paint a light layer of ink onto it, of Nuln Oil, and that will just darken it up and also give some life to the model as a whole. So I will do all of that, and I will be back shortly. There we go. We now have all of our uh, browns. That's the color. Sorry, guys. My brain shut down there for a second. Coffee still hasn't kicked in. <coughs> we have all the browns uh, inked, and it's given them some depth of character. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go to is I'm going to use my lead belcher. Very carefully, we're going to paint this hook in his mouth. He's got a couple of, like, charms that I've decided were metal on his wrist. And he's got a hook down here by his jungle area. Yes, that's what I'm calling it, the jungle area. That is a technical term. Look it up. And I think this axe back here will be metal. It'll be the one metal item he has procured in this adventure. So we're going to give that just a metal look to it. Not a whole lot of metal needed on this guy, which is a good thing. I, I think it's kind of fun to paint weaponry without the metal, without always needing metal for everything. So that's that. I think the next color we're going to do, just to get it out of the way... I'm going to switch to our Averlin Sunset, and we're going to paint all of our gourds yellow. So this one we just want to paint nice, even. I'm just going to paint all the gourds there and the gourd in his hand. I will paint that all up, and I'll be right back. There we go. We've started to uh, really flesh out this guy with his gourds intact. Oh. Uh, we'll use Andrew Dust for that. That'll make it look cool and stand out, I think. Uh, Realize that I missed a spot or kind of overwent, so we're going to put a little bit of red there. All right, so the last color that we need to do is we're going to use Eschen Gray. I already got some on my palette. I don't know why I'm shaking it up. We're going to use Eschen Gray, and we're going to use that to do his uh, blades. To give him a stone look to it. So we're going to do this blade, and then there's a blade at his uh, hip that we're going to do. And that's it! And with that, honestly, this would be an okay place to stop. It gives... It gives your guy on your mat, on your board like quite a bit of uh, distinction. But if you would like to stick around and see what we're going to do, we will keep going here. So then we got the uh, there. The next thing, oh, and I did go in, if you guys can see it on his face. I uh, painted the fishing line brown. So now it's a lot of the highlighting and it's a little bit of uh, this is and that's to do. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my Zandri Dust. And it's he's got just a little bit of, uh, it's like a, a bone. If, you, if I bring out the card art right here, he's got some bone that is in the uh, loincloth there. So I'm going to paint that Zandri Dust just to give it a little bit of life. And yeah, I'll be right back. There you go, just a minor uh, touch with the Zandri dust. The next one we're gonna use is, uh, it's time to start going layering our greens up. Let's layer some Lauren Forest. Um, this one is mostly gonna go onto the front of his body. We're gonna do all of uh, his, I don't know what the hell that is on a frog, the, the ribbit pouch thing, the brrr gets all fat when they go ribbity things and things. So we're going to do that in the lighter green and then also his belly. And that's about it because we want to keep that dark green on the back. So we're going to do all of this 
here and here and here and just the bottom lip and then we're going to go over in another lighter green still so i'm going to touch that all up and i'll be right back with that we have uh, applied our second layer of green and that has really brightened up the front of him um we're going to switch over to downstone real quick and we're going to do a small layer here just to kind of give a uh, a little bit lighter look to the center of the blade the rustling you here is i just forced my assistant to go outside and shovel where we are working because it sucks outside and we're in wisconsin and wisconsin still has uh snow hopefully when you guys see this we still won't have snow because it should be going up i don't know sometime probably next month but uh god i hope it's still not snowing in may in wisconsin if it does i might leave and i got i freaking live here and i'm used to this so we're just going to add a little bit of a highlight there kind of leaving the uh, edge on and then we're going to shove that down there and there we go and then the next color we're going to do is our Strachan green and once again we're going to go and highlight right over the top of the Lauren forest and it's just going to make that green even lighter make his belly and whatever the hell his his ribbit sack even lighter I don't know what, it, what it's called I'm not a frogologist so I'm no frog expert I am not a frog expert, I'm just a dude who paints with, who paints. And you don't need to know the parts of frogs to paint them. You just need to know, you know, what they look like. So I'm just going to touch that all up, and I'll be right back. All right, there, we now have a very nice, uh, I don't know, froggy part of him. Um, again, I'm not a frogologist, so I don't know what it is. The next thing I'm going to move to is I'm going to do some Troll Slayer Orange, and I'm going to do it over the uh, red of his hands. And we're just going to kind of brighten that orange up a little bit, or brighten that red up a little bit. And uh, so we're going to cover the whole thing in this Troll Slayer Orange, which should give it that look we're looking for. And if you do it in just a thin enough coat like that, you can still kind of see the red through, which is what we're looking for. So we're looking for a nice thin coat. Make sure your paint is very thin as it's applied. And I'll keep doing that, and I'll be right back. There we go. That has brought a lot of oranginess, yeah, like that oranginess, to his uh, appendages. Uh, the next one we're going to use, Fire Dragon Bright, and this one is just going to be a very light edging highlight. It's going to kind of touch across the knuckles here, and that actually uh, is kind of down, up and down like that. And that's all you're really looking for, is you're just trying to get a little bit of an extra bright, and that'll... Uh, give it some more give it more of that uh, tree toad look that they have and again with the croaks you can paint them whatever color you want I would look up um, different species of frog and paint them however you would like if you want to do a uh, I've looked on the internet before I actually did this I've seen croaks done in reds I've seen them in, done in blues um, can do just about anything so the last color that I got and I'm just gonna do it as just a little bit of a highlights uh, I've got some Bane blade brown if I can figure out where it is on my palette I'm just gonna kind of touch up the ropes a little bit to give them a little bit of uh, light shining on them and then I think I'm actually going to use that to just pick out a couple of the uh, little tortoise shells you don't want it, all of them just want some of the scales and that's it I'll be right back 
And there we go. That is pretty much what I'm going to do with this Croak Raider. Um, I've done up the base as I do pretty much all of my guys lately in Dawnstone. Uh, as you can see, I gave him creepy little beady red eyes. But uh, as always, when you look, this is about the distance you're going to see him from anyway. But you always want to make sure that he looks spectacular when people go and grab him up close. So we added just a little bit of uh, differentiation on the uh, tortoise shells. Tortoise shells, that's what it is. Turtle shells. So this has been another Jaffo video. Jaffo painting video. If you guys like, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not. Hit the bell button so you do get notified so that YouTube can stop screwing with us and screwing with you guys. Um, and follow the link at the end here if you are interested in having me do some painting for you. Um, I have my own painting service now, uh, so I do custom painting. You can reach me at facebook.com, the Warhammer painting, or Panda painting. Uh, that is facebook.com forward slash Warhammer PP. The link will be in the description description as I put both my fingers down below and there will also be something at the end of the video. So thanks for coming and stopping by. We'll see you later. Bye bye.